And we are back in action from the state capitol. David Smith here with you on Meet the Leaders and Representative Fred Camillo of the 151st District representing Greenwich, our guest on this one. Uh, Fred, we, we've had uh, lots going on already. It's been three weeks in. The various committees are all squared away. I know you've got a number of things on, on your plate, lots and lots. Some of the things that don't necessarily make the big headlines, but that are very important uh, are our uh, security force, our police men and women, something that sometimes don't get the consideration that they need, and, and you're focusing on that, I know. Yes, I am, uh, David. There, uh, there, we have a bill in there, I have a bill, uh, and that would address the issue of off-duty police officers when they're in a public place, be it a bar, restaurant, uh, mall, uh, where they're readily and easily identifiable. Uh, we want them to have a little bit of protection because if we've had some incidents, including one in Greenwich where uh, a couple people beat up an off-duty policeman who identified himself and who came to the aid of somebody because <clears throat> off-duty cops are never really off-duty. Right, Their sure. first instinct is to help somebody. But if we allow them to not be protected and have an enhanced penalty uh, when someone assaults an off-duty cop, when they know that person is a, is a police officer, then you'll have a situation where a police officers will just say, you know what, it's not worth it me getting involved. Right. And you don't want that because they really do, it is really a uh, benefit to society to have them in there, even if they're off-duty, it because uh, it's like having an off-duty nurse or doctor in a restaurant. You, it's, if you get sick, you're lucky sure. that they're there. So what, what was the upshot of that? Did they, did they get the uh, perpetrators and so People forth? People are arrested, and uh, <coughs> at, that's, still, that's going at trial, I believe. So, um, so would that just have been a, a common <coughs> assault charge levied in that case and nothing extra? Yeah, nothing extra. <coughs> and, uh, you know, again, and there was a... Uh, tape or of the people in the, in the cell where they actually were saying that uh, they did they knew it and so in a case like that you really it really highlights the need to protect our police officers because again they're never off duty and they're there to help us and it's, yeah, it's yeah. a benefit to have them there you're, you're involved in, with the insurance uh, committee and uh, you know if, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it uh, <laughs> does, did it really fall but if it falls onto your yard from somebody else's uh, property, yeah, that's what I've, happens. I've had it happen to me, and I've had friends and constituents that have happened have it happened to them, where a tree is is leaning and it's diseased or dying, or in some cases dead. And what the bill would do is, my bill would say, if you see that, you give them notice. A licensed arborist would have to look at the the tree and say that it's it's diseased or dead. This is in advance. In advance. Uh, if, it, if you don't get a chance to do that, then obviously this bill wouldn't come into play. But as it stands now, if a bill, if a, if a bill, if a tree is diseased and you've gone over to your neighbor and, and you told them about it and they didn't take it down and it fell on your property, they're not responsible to clean You're it stuck. up. You're stuck. You're stuck. And it could be several thousands of dollars sure. to clean it up. And it's not fair. <clears throat> now, if it hits your house, then it's a different story because then an insurance kicks in. But if it doesn't, it just hits nothing, you're responsible. And we've, we had some big trees fall, and I've had it happen to me, so I, it, I can tell you it's, uh, it's an issue out there. And, and uh, it passed out of judiciary last year. It died on the, on the House calendar, ran out of time. It's there right now. It had a public hearing, so we're hoping that they, they can get it out of judiciary this year. So um, <clears throat> it, you, you get an arborist to say that that tree is in danger of doing something, and then where do you file that information? It's got to be on record. You have to give them a, a copy of it, and insurance. Have everybody know it. What's going? You, that's why you have the written record, and you have the the arborist with the estimate and and, and the proof that they actually looked at it. Who pays for the arborist? Uh, you. <laughs> you whoever require whoever requests them. There's no free lunch or no free. No free lunch, in this but case. It's, I think it's money well spent because if it whatever that bill would be as compared to a four or five thousand dollar bill to clean it up yeah yeah this gives it affords a little bit of protection we, we are here uh, un unfortunately catching up with uh, you and your colleagues on a very shortened basis look forward to talking more with you I know you're involved with the Common Core and the education uh, and Metro North is a seemingly uh, never-ending battle that'll be going on and uh, a lot of work to be done there but it is always a pleasure <laughs> to see you Fred thank you so pleasure much pleasure to see you too, David there you go, uh, our meeting here with many of your uh, legislators right here on Meet the Leaders this go around, uh, Representative Fred Miller. I'm David Smith. We've got more coming up in just a moment. Stay with us.